Hello, um, uh, today is May 12th, uh, 2023, and we'll present two, two architects. We'll start with um, Will Alsop. Uh, let's read a little bit about him. Uh, William Allen Alsop uh, was born in December 1947 and died on the 12th of May 2018, exactly five years ago. So this is the reason we talk about him today, because he died on, on the 12th of May 2018. And today is the 12th of May, but 2023. Was a British architect and professor of architecture at the University for the Creative Arts Canterbury School of Architecture in Great Britain. He was responsible for several distinctive and controversial modernist buildings which are usually distinguished by the use of bright colors and unusual avant-garde events, uh, forms, sorry. In 2000, Alsop won the Sterling Prize, the most prestigious architecture award in the United, United Kingdom for the Peckham Library in London. We are going to see this building. Uh, this is what he said, that's the art of architecture, Again, the art of architecture, or should we say art architecture, putting everything together in your own way. Again, your own way, not some, someone else's way, your own way. Here he was, an artist. He also painted, uh, and uh, we are going to see his artworks as well. I think we need architects like him, unconventional, with long hair, if they have hair, uh, you know, uh, unafraid to take risks and building so-called controversial buildings. The more controversial, the better, I would say. Here he was. He, here he was. Hello, Mr. Alsop. Um, we are sorry you died five years ago, but that's a, a finality we will all arrive at sooner or later. Will Alsop. Drawings, paintings by Will Alsop. Uh, he built, he built something very similar to what we, we look at here. Um, you know, there are other architects who start actually an architecture project with an artwork, a large painting or a smaller painting or a drawing, uh, abstract or whatever. So the relationship between architecture and art always existed and hopefully will always exist. Here he is painting. Not bad. We need to externalize our tumultuousness creatively and uh, why not through the art of painting? Uh, I guess John Ruskin was right when he said uh, a great architect needs to be a, a, great, uh, a great artist, a great uh, painter or a great sculptor. Uh, maybe he put it a little bit too, in a st stringent terms, but I do think that, yes, in general, uh, you know, the one who, who, who builds uh, interesting things is also a, a visual artist. Although there are exceptions like Walter Gropius who couldn't draw. Walter Gropius always used uh, someone to, you know, to draw for him. Interesting, no? When you consider he was the founder of the Bauhaus. Ah, by the way, of Bauhaus, I intend to start an architecture school school called <clears throat> Bauhaus, Bauchaos. So I just put the letter C in front of H uh, A O S and becomes Bau Chaos, but uh, in, in Romanian, it could be Bauhaus, Bau, B-A-U-H-A-O-S, instead of H-A-U-S, Bauhaus, <laughs> pronounced almost identically, but you replace house with chaos, with chaos, with house, house in Romanian. What about that? Uh, China, smart 21st century city, uh, it's a project that he didn't build, but uh, uh, it looks interesting, no? Uh, well, he did many projects like this. Some of them got built, and we are going to see them. Colorful, 
sometimes crazy, but I think we need craziness. The more, the better. Bradford, urban renewal. That's what he proposed, this uh, square in front of the old buildings, Victorian as they are. Well, some of them, some are more, more modern. Will also. Cricket stand and, uni and university campus. He built this building and is not bad. Uh, he had the courage to create an innovative structure and good for him. He's not the only one who did something like this, you know, uh, like uh, Ian Kaplik, he also built uh, something for the cricket uh, sport uh, that, that is also futuristic and, uh, you know, a uh, high-tech, uh, you know, device, architectural device very refined and very, you know, so-called forward-looking, neo-futurist. This is not maybe neo-futurist, but it's clearly a modernistic structure on a stadium that uh, belonged to another time or was initiated in a different time. Uh, Will also. Now you see, what do we see here? We just talked before I started the presentation about harmony through contrast. Well, the building by uh, um, Will Alsop does have a reference in a way to the old building because of the triangles. And here we see the triangle of the sloping roof. But otherwise, it's a, you know, it's a very different kind of architecture for all to see. And, and so is inside. And color, yes. Nothing wrong with color. And look at those beautiful clouds, you know, reflected by those um, large pieces of glass. Sculptural, no? Uh, in a certain sense, to a certain degree, you know, plastically dramatic. Columns that are not straight. Why not? We are going to see more of this uh, when we talk about Daniel Lipskin, who was born on this day, the 12th of May, but not this year, of course. He's not a baby, uh, barely born. Hotel du, Hotel du Departement, uh, 1994. This must be in France, but I don't know exactly where. But it's a very large uh, building, uh, imposing with its... Uh, you know, uh, plastic, uh, uh, you know, vehemence. Toronto Apartments offices. This is a, a project which he didn't build, but it's rather interesting because uh, you have this embroidered architecture at the, uh, the, the base of the building, and uh, and and then above this, uh, you know. Um, um, large prism that uh, floats uh, with a with a certain degree of elan vital it was not built maybe some color would have helped but in this proposal uh, the building remained uh, whitish if i am to say so but even here we see the the ornament, no, uh, the, 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 you know, the first floors, they have uh, an embroidered appearance, an embroidered facade. I don't know what this is, something maybe, uh, you know, ah, yes, these are apartments, you know, modeled for this particular um, complex, a uh, housing complex. And here he is, well, with the back towards us, maybe with a client or maybe with, a, I don't know, a collaborator with some wine and a bottle of wine and then some artworks by um, Will Alsop on the walls. As you can see, an artist, even a bicycle there on the right, nice. And here we, we see other other forms of, uh, uh, you know, it, it is enticing to see architects who are not uh, 
you know, homo economicus or, uh, you know, accountants or, uh, uh, you know, uh, engineers, uh, well, although engineers uh, sometimes should be architects. Let's remember that uh, Louis Le Corbusier was very fond of engineers. He said, I, I love painters and engineers, but not architects. That's, that's what Le Corbusier said. Nice. Forward Children's Center 2004. Now look at this here, you know, for children, but uh, for their parents perhaps as well. A ludic space with a lot of color. Well, also, who was himself probably a big child? You know, a child, uh, I don't know, 65 years old or 60 years old. I, I remember watching uh, um, an interview with, uh, it was a film published on YouTube about Le Corbusier and he introduced himself. He was reading because he didn't know English. Le Corbusier didn't know English very well. So he was reading. He said, I'm a young man, uh, uh, a 72 years old young man. In that sense, perhaps also uh, Will Alsop was, uh, this is, I didn't know him personally, but uh, looking at him as, as his work, I think he was a, he was a child, a grown up child. Someone, uh, you know, about whom you could easily say, you know, he, he, he was too old to grow up. But that's, that's a quality actually. Palestra, 2006. As you can see, he built a lot. Some buildings more uh, more um, intriguing uh, and interesting than others, but he tried even here. As you can see, what is happening underneath uh, underneath the building. Will also. Projects in China. I like this work very much, particularly what I see on the right. Uh, otherwise, a lot of glass, yes, and we know what uh, the problems with glass are. You know, losses of energy. But the fascination with glass continues. The promises of the demagogical glass, because it is a demagogical material. It promises you paradise, but just looking towards an outside uh, that seems to be unrestricted by the world that separates us from it is not enough. But look at this. You know, this is good architecture. This is good art. This is, uh, uh, you know, um, an expression of uh, vitality. It's... it's uh, Almost Dionysian. Not bad. China, the country that was ruled, you know, for a long time by the by Mao. I mean, I wonder what Mao would have, Mao would have thought if he saw something like this built in 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 in, in his country. Almer, 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 I don't know how to read. Um, well, it's not an architecture that is uh, completely different from what we saw, you know, in some other places by, th by some other people. But it does have a joie de vivre and it does have a, uh, you know, verve. And it's, it comes from art, essentially. It comes from art. Shanghai Kiss, that's uh, that uh, the tall uh, sc a sculpture, a sculpture, an installation that he, but he, you see the scale, the, the tower on the left side is much uh, less tall than the, this, uh, uh, you know, uh, installation or sculpture, I don't know how to call it, sign. It's still a building, as you can see, but... Uh, alarmingly uh, 
distinct on the on the skyline of of, of this uh, of this city. Xi'an Hotel, some sketches. Um, Did he write that poem? That's possible too. And we can only salute architects who also write poems. Floating ever the floating sand, a breeze drifts through the garden, a dappled light feeds the flowers, a tea gives growth to the grass, to the guest, sorry. All moments combine a respite, a rest, a contemplation on the pinnacle, of history, new views on everything. I don't know if he wrote it. Probably not. Maybe it's a you know a, a Chinese poet. Um, but but maybe it's not an accident that a, a, a short poem is uh, you know on the same page with some sketches that uh, he made for for this project, and uh, it was not built, but. You know, for imagination is perhaps enough for the, the imagination of the of the ones who contemplate the project. Playfulness, creativity, some irresponsibility, perhaps. Let's not forget what uh, Tzvi Hacker said that a great building should be illegal. Maybe some illegal elements here and there. That's okay. For an artist, it's okay, I would say. And this is the top view of what he proposed. Playful. Too bad it was not built. Even if for the imagination is maybe uh, enough. Colorium, 2001, an office building. And it does have colors. I don't know if it has all the all the flags of the world on it. Um, the man was also a painter. He loved color, so the building shows it. It's okay. The color inside as well. Some uh, you know graphic lights on the ceiling uh, in the manner that uh, daniel lipskind used uh, in uh, in berlin in his uh, uh, jewish museum uh, in several projects by will also uh, appears this uh, prism that sits on top of another prism and uh, the one at the top is usually uh, you know ready to take off puddle dock hotel Another proposal that was not built. A dandy inside, staring at us seductively. For London, but it was not built. Abu Dhabi Hotel. Another proposal that was not built. Dancing, dancing, and painting on the right, and then an architect, an architect's vision on the left was not built. La Fosca, another project that was not built, but we see here again the verb of this gentleman will also. Anything goes. Just uh, allow the artist to express himself and that's what you get. I wish it was built, but it, it was not. And it would have been interesting if it was built. An adventurous architect, that's for sure. Raffle City, well, he built this, and uh, you know, they are not the smallest buildings in the world. Raffle City, it's almost a city within a city.
So why did he complicate himself? Because because this is the role of art to to fight off um, an insufficient reality through you know distortions, through oppositions, through deviant gestures. Raf Lux, Lux Hotel. Interesting, no? Raf Lux. Is there such a thing? Uh, Raf or Ro Lux? Or... Probably not. Well, I like the oxymoron. Raf Lux Hotel. The public uh, building that he built. I don't know exactly what's here. Some kind of a ludic building, you know, for uh, you know events having to do with fun. No restraint. This gentleman will also have no um, um, no frontiers, no barriers, no uh, no fear. Chromatically, no fear. Look at the windows. Zuhai, another building that was not built. I don't even know where he proposed it. Do we need the crazy artists? I think we do. I think we do. <laughs> what would life be without them? Although sometimes you can grow tired of art as well. Gao Young, 2009-2010. That's the building that I like the most from what he did. Uh, plus the building in Canada, which you are going to see uh, very soon. I look here, you know. It's uh, it's uh, non-conformism in action, and it doesn't look bad. I don't know what's going on in these uh, volumes, in those spaces there, but I imagine there are some functions, so to speak, but. It's almost irrelevant, you know. There are there are things that uh, stir up your curiosity, and you would you would you would love to experience experience them, to you know uh, explore them. It's an architectural event. This is what it is. I mean, just one single piece here. It's an architectural event, but uh, the whole of it, even more so. So, you know, some people think just Frank Gehry is in the world who makes crazy things. No, there are other architects uh, beyond also Will also, but he is one of them. He received the Sterling Prize for, for this work, which in my opinion is not the most interesting, but, you know, committees that offer awards do not like um, excess too much, I think. Anyway, this is the building. It's a library. And he received the, the biggest prize in uh, architecture in, in Great Britain, the, the Sterling Prize. If it was not written there with big letters, library, we wouldn't, you, we wouldn't know really. But this facade in the back uh, of the building, I find it more interesting actually. And um, again, color. Not too many libraries in the world look like this. And we see the buildings around the library. 
uh, his uh, building doesn't have anything to do with uh, with the surroundings. The interior of the library. Why shouldn't the library be also, you know, ludic? Why not? To combine learning with pleasure, with joy, with with playing. He enjoyed themselves doing uh, that, uh, himself doing uh, doing architecture, doing biz, uh, buildings, building buildings, library. <laughs> it's 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 so naive in a way that that word, uh, you know, library. Maybe it would have been better if if no name was attached to the building. The Sharp Center, Ontario College of Art and Design. Now, ladies and gentlemen. We see what um, will also be truly capable of the Sharp Center, and it is Sharp indeed, the Ontario College of Art and Design, Canada. Here it is. Not bad. I, I like to think that the the students who study in this um, college are stirred up, you know, to be imaginative, to be creative, to be nonconformist. What could be a better advice to them or a better inspiration? At night, above those uh, older buildings, and look at it, the monster of creativity floating uh, courageously and irresponsibly above some, um, you know, uh, uh, buildings with sloping roofs and so on. Nice. This is the role of art, actually, to provoke a pâté la bourgeoisie. And that's what the building by Will, Will also attempts to do and probably succeeds. Now, some of his buildings, buildings are like his uh, art, like his uh, paintings. I mean, look at the buildings around it, and all of a sudden it's this building which proclaims a different, uh, uh, you know, uh, mentality, so to speak. And it is a different mentality. Now, maybe if it was a, a faculty of or a university of, I don't know, uh, economics or, uh, I don't know, public relations or um, international affairs would have been less legitimate to be like this. But it is a college of art and design, for God's sake. So it's just fine. This is what art is supposed to do. To shock. Housing. Even the houses he proposed, like it's, it's you know, a housing complex, there is some uh, playfulness here as well, isn't, isn't there? I don't know what the letter N stands for. I like to imagine that it does have a meaning, but it's not necessary, really. You, can, you could do also meaningless things sometimes. 151 City Road proposal from 2007 was not built, a tower, an interesting tower. I think he was a little bit too exuberant for, um, you know, most clients and most societies. But uh, it's even amazing that he built so much considering, uh, you know, his uh, exuberance. He was not fearful, that's for sure. Will also didn't know fear. Or I think, I imagine he didn't know fear. If I look, you know, looking at his buildings, look at what's going on at the bottom of the building. You know, it's uh, Vasily Kandinsky there. Kind of.
a pop Vasily Kandinsky lung funk, another proposal which was not built. He wanted to change the world. <laughs> and, he, you know, I don't know if he succeeded. He probably didn't, but here and there he left his mark. I mean, why shouldn't the, the, the skin of a building be like this? Why not? I think it would look quite interesting. Artworks, and with this we end this short uh, presentation about Will Alsop on the day when he died five years ago. And the artworks are like, his, like some of his buildings. Will also. The architect who painted or the painter who built the spiral, the spiral which fascinates so many creators. We remember that uh, when uh, James Joyce uh, asked Brunkush to draw a, a portrait of him, um, uh, initially Brunkush uh, drew. Uh, a figurative uh, portrait of Joyce, and Joyce didn't uh, like it, and then he did an abstract one, which was exactly a spiral. He was good as a painter as well, I would say, Will also. Okay, and now we, we, we go to the second presentation, uh, just a second.